And the last thing I want to say is that we've been initiating an emergency planning campaign on the existing reactors in the United States. We have 103 of them operating. Some of them are identical to the Fukushima design. They're called GE Mark I's. We have 23 of them here in the United States. The closest ones here are upwind of us in Alabama called Browns Ferry. The four near Charlotte are even worse than the GE Mark I's. They're the Westinghouse ice condensers. That's a whole separate story. But believe me, the early containment failure, which is what they call those explosions that we saw in Japan, early containment failure is even earlier at the ice condensers near Charlotte than it is on the design that blew up in Japan. So we're working on emergency planning here, but the people from the United States who were in Japan at the time the Fukushima accident happened were given a notice from the US State Department saying that they should stay 50 miles away from the site. So like where is that? You know, you're a Japanese citizen and you say 10 miles and okay, you're okay at 10 miles. American citizen, 50 miles. American citizen here, 10 miles. So there's an opportunity here to start breathing a little bit of sense into this discussion with this State Department memo saying 50 miles, shouldn't that apply to everybody? Why is somebody who has a U.S. body, a U.S. incarnation, whatever you want to say about it, U.S. passport identification, told to be safe at 50 and then they come home and they live near, say, Turkey Point in uh, Miami, 20 miles away from the nuclear power plant, and they're told they're safe. So it's a tragedy, it's a disaster, it's many, many times worse than the Hiroshima bombing, but it is our prayer that the beginning of the nuclear age that really began with the bombing of Hiroshima end with the disaster at Fukushima. Mary, do you know anything about the uh, the nuclear nuclear regulatory whatever it is in Japan? How it compares to what we have here? Um, I was speaking to a journalist, um, Nagasaki, day. Um, at an event, and he said that uh, the, it, the Japanese were much worse than, than the Americans as far as You know, control. it's a mantra that the U.S. industry has adopted, that the Japanese are so much worse than us, it could never happen here. When Chernobyl happened, it was because it was a Soviet design. They didn't have containment. Oh, it could never happen here. It is all just the defensiveness of people whose butts are on the line and will not acknowledge what they did even five years earlier, that Japan was one of the most high-tech societies with some of the greatest investment in doing everything right as possible. And people there are extremely orderly and, and committed to a really strong work ethic and all kinds of things that we don't have here. There's absolutely no basis for blaming the Japanese for that 10.0 quake. And there's absolutely no basis for saying that a U.S. situation would be any different with a 10.0 quake. None. This was a Japanese journalist, and I think he was talking more about uh, what they did for the people, that they took such a long time. Do you think that in the United States they would do the same thing? They did with, at Three Mile Island, right? They didn't tell anybody what was going on. Right. They didn't tell people what was, what was going on. They did not validate and support anyone but women and children evacuating, and that was after something like five days. And when it came to the court proceeding to try and support the victims, they were completely unsupported and swindled. It came down in the final analysis of the last appeal on the victims of Three Mile Island to them being trapped into having to prove what, what their radiation dose was. Nobody can prove what their radiation dose was. I've had dental x-rays since I was a child. I've had some medical x-rays. I've had a couple you know, other medical procedures. I get annual doses of radiation. I've lived in contaminated areas. I had an accident at work. I'm relatively informed and intelligent. I don't know what my radiation dose has been. No one can prove what their radiation dose has been. And yet they were uh, trapped into agreeing to uh, they would only get compensation if they could prove that their dose was over a certain level. And of course nobody can prove that. Well, maybe, maybe Bill can join in on this next question that I have, which has to do with, uh, with you know, safety. And, and the Japanese were, didn't take care of their people quickly enough. What would happen? You discussed it in an earlier workshop, but uh, and if, if, if there were a nuclear power plant 
problem such as, as this, not transportation, but actually another Fukushima here, what could we expect in terms of, of how well prepared we are in the United States? What the emergency preparedness is compared to what was in Japan? Do you know? Well, I think, I think that one of the challenges in the United States is that we're bigger. I mean, bigger is not always better. And we have a much bigger geographic area for all these decision makers who are going to step in and say, it's our jurisdiction, it's our, uh, we're in charge here for them to cover. So, for instance, um, we haven't had a full-scale meltdown like Fukushima here of a big reactor. Um, but when a nuclear bomb went off the road, it took the Department of Energy two days to get there. So I'm sure that things would be happening in the two days that it might take the right individual to get where they're supposed to go, but um, bigger is not always better. Mm -hmm. Definitely not. And if you're expecting big government which is basically now controlled by the corporations who fund it to respond, they will spend their time covering themselves because they ha we have no, we have a plutocracy now instead of a democracy because money talks and the nuclear industry seems to be able to fund money from someplace. 